Hello everyone, welcome to this Let's Play of LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. I am Jackson Tyler, your host of AbnormalMapping.com, and this is just going to be a super casual Let's Play. Uh, I've been having a stressful time, and I wanted to play a, the, the most casual game I can think of. Uh, not in a shitty, like, ooh, casual game way, I literally mean... I want to relax and play a video game, and when I think of that, I think of LEGO Star Wars, because in 2005 I bought the first one, Many a memory are caught up in um, uh, playing this game, waking up early in the morning just to collect all the things. I, I think the LEGO game's really cool, and this is the first one of them, and I wanted to go back and play it for you all. Now, begins in Mossage de Cantina, which uh, I'm told is important to the Star Wars lore. I don't know, I've never seen a Star Wars movie. That's a lie. I will talk about the Star Wars movies during the course of this Let's Play. In fact, I literally just got done watching Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Ta-da! Because I'm going to watch the movies and then talk about the movies and this game as I go on, and probably about other sci-fi things like Star Trek and maybe Doctor Who, and just things that are relevant, because everyone's thinking about Star Wars right now. Those trailers just got released... It was the celebration the other week, or the other month. I don't know when these Let's Plays are going up, but it, the celebration was recent here, and the trailer came out, and everyone lost their minds, and I was like... And I, I chose the opportunity, or took the opportunity, to get sad about Star Trek, because that's who I am. But it did look cool. The movie looks cool. But let's go in and play Chapter 1, Negotiations. It will be short. I like these little intros for every single chapter of the game. I'm glad they give it the full treatment and a little bit of summaries, especially because they have to cut so much out of the plot in order to make their um, silent cutscenes make sense, which I love. It's great. But uh, so that's why we're going to be doing one level of Let's Play. It'll be one movie a week, I assume. It works out. I don't know. Maybe we'll go to Saturday just because there's six episodes in every movie. Six chapters in every episode, even. I love these cutscenes, they're so charming. <laughs> That's good. Uh, they reveal, um, these cutscenes reveal so much about, like, storytelling and how quickly you can tell a story. Because they're cutting out all the dialogue, and obviously they're relying on your, um, like, pre-existing knowledge of what they're riffing on. Like, it's references, it's like, hey, you remember this shot? You remember the shot where the guy walks out and they talk to the droid? But... They still work, and they work much better than they do in the movie, and that's particularly because the first movie, uh, or the first episode, the fourth movie, I guess. It's always been the first movie to me. I know it's not, but I'm I'm that age. I'm sorry. I'm always whenever I've watched the Star Wars trilogy, every single time, I have watched it uh, one to six. Um, Star Wars saga, I guess, not trilogy. Which is is I know wrong, but it's the age I was. It's. When I was growing up, the Star Wars uh, prequels were coming out. They were a big deal. I remember going to the cinema to see... I wasn't allowed to go to the cinema to see um, episode one. I was a bit too young, because it came out in 99. And I would have only been... I was in reception, so I would have been five or six, probably. Because I was born in 93, November 93. But I saw... Um, everyone was into it at the time. I like saw things about pod racing. People had books about it. And I was like, that's cool, I like the Star Wars, I guess. I was watching a lot of Star Trek when I was younger because my dad would share it with me. Me and my dad, and my whole family, would have this ritual at a, like, every Friday, I think, it would be on BBC Two, and it would go Simpsons to Star Trek to um, Robot Wars 
and that'd be our evening. Oh, to Top of the Pops also, and that'd be our evening. It'd be a great time. But I, I was always into sci-fi as a kid, and I got into Star Wars a bit later when Attack of the Clones came out, but it was never my thing. But I did really like it. It's, it's weird to me just how much time... Ah, shit, I lost the blue one. That's the one I needed. Oh, well. Probably still, I'm, I'm certain I'll still be able to get a true Jedi, which is the, that bar that's filling at the top is the true Jedi status and you have to collect enough coins without dying, like, um, once it's locked, it's locked. Let's kill these guys first. Oh shit, why am I Qui-Gon? Qui-Gon sucks. Let's be Obi-Wan. But yeah, I was talking about being a kid and it's weird for me to think about how much time passed in between each movie. Like, when I was in reception when I was uh, like five or six, it must have been six, it couldn't have been five. But when I was that age, um, um, I like turning off their lightsabers, but they always keep them out. They, oh well. There we go. Um, that one. Really, you can calm down the soundtrack. You know that, don't you? Let's open this up. Oh, hey. Look at that. That's good. We're going to be fine with this level. Um, what's in there? Maybe I'll come back there when we get um, the droid. I don't know how much... Uh, because I don't intend to do that much replaying, but I know there's a lot you can't do um, unless you go come back into the levels and replay them. Now, uh, okay, but yeah, no, uh, <laughs> let's playing. You start a bunch of thoughts and then things happen and then you can't finish them. But I was talking about um, playing these these uh, games, these games, watching these movies and being into this thing and how much of my childhood it like took up. Ooh. Right, there they are. Like, because I was really young when that first movie came out, and then when the second movie came out, I, I um, how old? But it was 2002, so I must have been about nine, almost. No, eight. It would have been eight. And in 2005, I rem I remember the specific day that I saw Revenge of the Sith. Not because of Revenge of the Sith, to be fair. I was minorly excited. But I remember it because it was the same day that the Doctor Who episode with the gas masks aired. And so I couldn't sleep that night. And I was really annoyed because I was excited for the Star Wars. And I was wanted to uh, be in this post-Star Wars glee after the movie had come out. But instead I was just uh, in bed. <laughs> um terrified of the gas mask creatures. Such is life, I guess. Let's take care of you. Come on. Hey. Oh, he's... Fine. But there's the one bat there that we're going to open first. We're going to open as well. Alright, come on. Follow us. Alright, good. We can't get into that one because we do need to start level again and get an astromech droid. Okay. Let's come back. But... Man, that means, like, because I know that um, Render the Death and that Doctor Who episode and everything, that all came out when I was in year six. I had um, transferred to a new school because uh, I didn't get on well in my old school. I was being bullied a lot. It wasn't fun. I didn't have any good time there. So I went to a new school, which was a lot better, and I only had one year there. It was probably the best school year I had, which isn't an achievement for me, but still. Which means that in the time between... Um, Revenge, uh, Attack of the Clans, Revenge of the Sith, my dad left, which is weird to think about because I always watched a lot of sci Oh, no shit, get on, get on here. Pick me up. Because I watched sci-fi with my dad, that's what I did. I, I watched all the Star Trek with him. But, but by the... Oh shit, no. I didn't realize there was more up there. I'll, I'll jump up again. Because I'd, I'd like some things. I'm going to want to buy a lot of... Because uh, you have to... I'm fairly sure like the gold bricks, you have to buy a bunch of things. Hey, get on the other one, dude. Oh, hey. The droid's going. Cool. Yeah. 
That's probably all the mini kits we're going to get in this level. I don't, I don't know where the others are. I know there's like a big area coming up, but uh, I don't know how many we'll be able to get. And there'll probably be one in there, but I can't get them. Just get me these coins. God, collecting coins is so relaxing in this game. My uh, dad, who I, he's like my uh, person for sci-fi, um, like who got me into it because of Star Trek, and he wasn't a big Star Wars guy either. Like he doesn't like Star Wars. He he was like firmly. Oh, I've already opened the door. Firmly, uh, big Star Trek nerd. He knew what he wanted, and what he wanted was to watch Wrath of Khan every single day at Butlins. <laughs> at he worked at Butlins, and they sh it shoot. Uh, yeah, he worked at a holiday camp called Butlins, and they showed. Um, I think it was Butlins, but they showed Wrath of Khan <laughs> every single day for a whole uh, every single week at the same day for the whole summer. That was the program, the weekly program, and he watched it every time in the cinema. And that sounds like a good summer to me. But. So between the time of like the Star Wars prequels being released for me was um, when I started to like discover my own sci-fi or my not my own just my own things because I s uh, can I get it yeah I can I'm probably not meant to be able to do that am I that's gonna be that's I'm not gonna make that am I know. Right. just over here. I like how the combat works in this game because it's really easy to not get hit if you just jam the X button with the, the um, uh, Jedi, but you have to time it to reflect it and that's cool. Um, what do I do with this? Oh that's if I want to go back, okay. Pick that up, come on. Run, 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 run. Da -da 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 -da. Yep. Oh, that, that's a nice little bit to teach you how those gates work. Cool. I already knew. Where are those droid cars? Says um, the incredibly racist stereotype of um, the Trade Federation. Man, some of the Star Wars character creation is super racist. But anyway, so by the time this game came out, I, I uh, was like playing, like my dad was left, uh, the things I was into I tended to come to on my own, which is a part of like my family, changes in my family, but also part of just growing up, like when you're super young you, you um, take after whatever um, like for you is your family, whether that's blood or blood, say blood like I'm in Game of Thrones, whether it's like um, relatives, uh, direct relatives, or just the people you know a lot, because I'm a big believer in like, you know, I don't know why I'm getting into this, this uh, Star Wars Let's Play, but the idea that, um, that I need my big jumpy guy to get that. Can I not build something there? What do I do? I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, what about this one over here? What do I do with this? One. Two. But when I was playing this game in 2005, I, I, I like came into discovering it on my own. Well, kind of on my own, actually. I, I guess I like... Um... Ah, there we go. Uh, I guess it was like through websites and stuff and knowing about video games by that point but that's why Star Wars relate, uh, like, oh, is in this weird place for me ah fucking hell do I need an astronaut enjoy for that where it's like kind of this thing that I know that my parents enjoyed both of them even though my dad was way bigger into I'm gonna give it one more try and then we're done but like my appreciation for it comes from my own terms and when like I the time I was most into Star Wars was when Render the Sith came out and when this game came out, it was 2005. Uh, and uh, my favourite Star Wars thing, and I still to this day I would say is the best Star Wars thing, is the Kennedy Tarkovsky Clone Wars cartoon. But yeah, I just... Many, many nights were... Sp I'm, fuck it, I'm not getting it. 
nights were spent uh, and mornings were spent playing this game. And even though I have a weird relationship to Star Wars, I feel like I've done a bad job explaining because I don't. It doesn't really matter, and it's hard to explain. And like explaining it is kind of pointless because just hey, it's a series of movies that I watched at some point in my youth. But I thought I'd give some kind of introduction in this first episode here. Let's go through. We should probably let the droid through. Ah, it's difficult. They're in my way. Don't worry. Shit. Jump. Yes. It's really easy to die in this game, even though like death is death is meaningless because unless you're like going for true Jedi and you haven't got it yet, that's the only time death has like real tension. But just like removing the consequence from a, th I mean, like, giving death a consequence, a stiff consequence, doesn't actually make the, the it more tense. I don't know. Like, I disagree with that argument. I like how, I like the life and death. I just really like the way these games are designed. I'm just going to say how good they are, I guess. But, thus is the end of this level, I think. Because we have to split up and go on separate ships, remember? And then he's like, you're right about one thing, Master. The negotiations were short. And then we go in the ship. This, those two shots, or three shots, I guess, that shot reverse shot there, contained more information about Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon's relationship than were in that entire movie. So that Obi-Wan being cool, trying to sneak in, and Qui-Gon being like, what are you doing, mate? Just calm down. Go away. But, yeah, that was the opening level of Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. I had a lot of fun. I'm excited to continue this series. I like talking about this, I think I've got a wide range of things to discuss here. Way more than just, you know. Because it's going to be a chill let's play. It's not going to be a how does he react to this game. It's going to be just talking, talking about sci-fi. Um, I, I was going to say, if you, wanna, if you want me to talk about certain things and you have any questions, you should write in. But I'm going to be uploading them after I've recorded them all. So I'll just send a call out on Twitter soon. But in the past for you listening to this. Too late if you've discovered me through this video. Let's head back to the cantina. Oh, we need to save the game. Good. Confirm save. Thank you very much. Next time I'll probably talk about um, the movie that I watched, which was the, um, episode one. Because I didn't really talk about that. I just talked about Star Wars as a thing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Like I said, I'm going to... Um, and when I've done with episode one here, I will watch episode two, uh, and that's how I'm, get, I'm getting caught up for uh, episode seven this December. And even if they don't release it as episode seven, I'm going to call it as that because naming them episodes is like core to the idea of Star Wars in my head, and that's totally a selfish thing. And like that's how I think of them, and they can't change that. But I also feel like it gives it that serial nature because it's harkening. They, they were old movies when they came out. Like they were like, hey, it's '30s movies, or you know, in the '70s. It's great. Anyway, that's me talking about Star Wars. If you enjoy my rambling here and would like more rambling about Star Wars, please watch me play Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. I have a Patreon at um, patreon.com slash headfallsoff. I am on Twitter at um, headfallsoff. And I have a website at normalmapping.com. Uh, those are the plugs. I thought I should do plugs in this, the first episode, because it's a cool episode. It's like, yeah, we're getting it. But, yeah, if you enjoyed, please consider following me or well, helping me out, because I don't have any money and I'm unemployed and disabled. So, goodbye, one and all. Take me... No, come with me on this Star Wars journey. God, this outro is terrible. I don't know how to end it. I'm like George Lucas, rip me away. <laughs>